Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. My name is Nancy Poole, and my fellow minister of the Word is Mike Anders. On behalf of the Church of the Ascension, we welcome all of our guests and visitors. We gather as family to live out our mission, proclaim the Word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as missionary disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. We are blessed to have you with us today. Today's Mass is being streamed live. We are united today, both in person and with our online family. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Joe, assisted by Deacon Miles. Our Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased John William Cheatwood. A few announcements. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Father Daniel is away for the next two weeks due to the passing of his mother, Mary Malangumo. Please keep Father and his family in your prayers during this time of loss. The deadline to register for the YOA golf tournament is May 1st and is fast approaching. Please see the bulletin board in the comments for more information on how to support our youth and register for golf. Eastern Shore Migrant Workers Clothing Donations are due back this Monday, April 29th, in Mary's Corner. Thank you. The parish is invited next Saturday, May 4th, for a special event honoring our Blessed Mother Mary. We begin with a rosary at 9 a.m., Mass at 10 a.m., followed by the May crowning in Mary's Garden. Then join us for lunch in the picnic pavilion. Please note, adoration and reconciliation will not be offered next Saturday. Parish directory photo sessions have begun and new session dates have been added. Please see the bulletin, Friday email, and website for additional information and volunteer to help on photo session day. Thank you. And please rise and greet those around you. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace, mercy, and peace of God, our loving Father, be with each of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, images have unsuspected depth to them. Images that carry on intangible power. What images we use to speak the relationship between God and ourselves are terribly important for us when we contemplate at Mass what is being imaged before us. God lives in each of us. He lives through his divine spirit. How do we know that? And how do we react to it constantly? And how do we respect, expect our own actions about it? How do we show it? We show it in our penance sometimes. Let's bear our humility before God now. Lord of life, Lord Jesus, you created us in love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord of mercy, you saved us out of compassion. Oh, Christ, have mercy. Lord of hope, your presence is our consolation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, for forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the high. And we pray, almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism and come to the joys of life eternal, 
Do this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and when the children please join me. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good. You know what we're going to hear about today? We're going to hear about Jesus today. And we're going to hear about how Jesus is the vine. You know what a vine is? What is a vine? You know what it is? Something that grows on trees. Yes. And do you know what sometimes comes from a vine? Leaves come from vines, right? What else? What else? Anything else? How about fruit? Fruit, maybe like strawberries, raspberries, things like that. All right, well, today you're going to hear about different kinds of fruit that come from vines, okay? Things like peace and love and joy, all those kinds of good things. All right? Okay, you got it? Okay. All right, who would like to carry out the cross? Have you carried it before? You have? Who hasn't carried it? You haven't carried it? Okay, there you are. Okay, turn that around. And who would like to carry the book? Okay, there you are. We sent you forth to hear the word of the Lord. Take these words to heart and walk in God's way. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for your mercy. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you. Lord, for your mercy, I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me.
my soul from the dead. Restore me to life from those who sink into the grave. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for your mercy. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather around them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, 
that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, uh, over the past years, among the most famous, most expert scripture scholars in the United States was a priest, a Sulpician priest, by the name of Raymond Brown, Father Raymond Brown. I had the privilege of being on the same overall faculty when I was teaching as Ray Brown. Ray Brown's specialty was the writings of St. John the Evangelist, the, the author of the fourth gospel and his epistles. And so, I was a friend of Ray Brown's. Now, I, I'm not a name dropper. I was someone <laughs> whose name he knew and whose face he knew uh, and who read most of his writings because I was so proud of him and he writes so well. Uh, and he was, the connection was with an, a mutual friend that he had and was a mentor to me, another priest. So Ray was on the faculty of the theology, the university level of our educational system, which was the first Roman Catholic seminary in the United States in the happy city of Baltimore, of which I was born. Uh, I was in the western suburbs of the city at the college level, Ray was in the northern section of the city at the university level, and we had between us the House of Philosophy, which was right in the heart of downtown, all right? But we all met at, for uh, uh, cocktails and, and a supper at the end of the academic year, the whole, the whole faculties of all those three places. Ray Brown's, one of his last books, is why I mention all this to you now, because last week's gospel that you heard was the gospel for Good Shepherd Sunday. And today it's the vine and, and the branches gospel. They both are tied together. They both express what I themed at the beginning of our mass today as our relationship with God in Jesus, by, because of our faith in Jesus, 2,000 years later than Jesus as a God-man, all right? And they contain, can contain that same theme, shepherding and vine and branches. And so you have experienced very recently something of the gist of Raymond Brown's latest last book before he died. And the title of that book will give you a clue to what I'm talking about and trying to get across to you. The title is The Church That the Apostles Left Behind. The Church That the Apostles Left Behind. When they were struggling to establish what is it, as members of this church, that we are trying to understand as our relationship to Almighty God with faith in Jesus Christ? So that's the first century. And that's what I'm going to try to re-up from the past Sundays for you. Very briefly, I think. I'd like to quote from that book just very shortly. For eternal life, one must continue to follow the shepherd and to adhere to the vine. That's a synopsis of the past two Sundays. All right, you know that we've got that loaded into your brain. More than the founder of the community, 
Jesus is the animating principle of that community. You, still alive and well in our very midst. He is the shepherd who tends his sheep. You, you belong to him. He knows you and calls you by name. in the following readings from Acts that you heard this morning. Barnabas, Barnabas is an old softy. He adopts Saul, who has converted to Jesus by being knocked off his horse on the way to Damascus, all right? He has gone through a period of retreat, trying to understand what he has Learn to believe about Jesus, St. Paul does. He changes his name to Paul after a while, still after a while, because he understands that Jesus is the life-giving connection to the Almighty. Barnabas has to intercede with a Christian community back in Jerusalem in defense of St. Paul, because St. Paul, as Saul of Tarsus, has been a very prominent enemy of new Christians and has participated as an onlooker, onlooker, holding the cloaks of those who stoned the first martyr, St. Stephen, to death. So St. Paul, as Saul, is very much an object of suspicion for those early Christians. They're very, very unsettled in his presence. And along comes Barnabas, who puts his arm around Paul and introduces him warmly to those early Christians. Barnabas is from the tribe of Levi. He's a Levite and greatly loved by those who have adopted Christianity, greatly loved by them. And if he adopts Saul, then to be called Paul, as a trustworthy person, another convert, then they accept him. They accept Paul. Obviously, there has been a great distrust of Saul, Saul, Paul. We all need a living connection with one another. And they realize that. We find our identity and our acceptance together. In part within our community. We must avoid privatizing our relationship with God and our relationship with Jesus. I hope you understand my verb there, privatizing. It's me and Jesus. The heck with you. I've got him. But nonetheless, Jesus is our salvation. And our faith is rooted in him, but also with one another. The life-giving connection is expressed in the good shepherding and in the vine and branches idioms. In the first reading, Barnabas today, the first reading today, is not indifferent to Paul's need to be accepted. Barnabas is is stepping out on a limb. He introduces Paul to the rest of the community. One can imagine there is much skepticism involved in all this, and some criticism, too. It's very bold on Barnabas's fault, in his fault. Yet, John tells us 
to live in deed and in truth, not merely talk about our faith life, but act it. We cannot be indifferent to one another. We cannot be indifferent to the idea and the meat and bones of community. Love flowing into genuine action on behalf of the community. An action for one another flowing out of our community. In his letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul ultimately says that if our love does not flow into that action, our Eucharist, no matter how often we celebrate it, has been in vain. In the larger context for today's gospel, John speaks of the possible persecution that any Christian can expect. Jesus is divine and we are the branches. There is a sense of mutual indwelling, an I-thou relationship. Fix that phrase in your mind, even though you don't customarily use it. I, thou. Jesus is the life-giving connection for each of us. As individuals and together, note the conjunction there, as individuals and together. Live on in me, Jesus says, as I live in you. The real visible vine today is the church gathered around the table of the Lord. The Eucharist becomes, in the words of Vatican II, the fountain to which and from which all of our actions must flow. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I think you've heard that before. We must be 24 hour, hours a day Christian. We cannot be closet Christians like Nicodemus, who only came to Jesus at nighttime, didn't want to be seen as having come to Jesus. We become like a withered, rejected branch picked to be thrown into the fire, if that's the case. We can remain faithful to the God we love, supposedly, and the church we love, supposedly, in times of persecution. The pruning, the pruning may be painful, but its purpose is to bear much fruit. Love is expressed by doing. Raymond Brown observes that John happens to write only about the vine, that's Jesus, and the branches of Christianity, that's like today the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Baptists, and all so forth, are not there found in John. John's only interested in expressing relationship of all Christians with Jesus. That's the heart of the matter. Ecumenism may not be trumpeted in John, but it lives in his life blood. All of us Christians live out of Jesus. The divine charism distinguishes us. 
John's interested in the basic life-receiving status enjoyed by all of us. So we say in our faith, Jesus, our friend, is the vine who is the life-giving connection with the Almighty. We cling to you through the power of your spirit. There is a powerful mystical and theological strain in this passage, both last Sunday and this from John. In today's homily, I have tried to apply it to the realities of human life. That's where I got that all of us stuff. It's common to all of our Christian lives. When the most simple kind of cooperation, and I tried to get a metaphor that would be the most simple, the elementary kind of cooperation. And I'm, you're going to laugh now. The example I chose is the, the arrival of a newspaper at your front door. That comes from the cooperation of a lot of people. Printers and truckers and distributors and then your carrier to make sure it always comes. It always is out of the rain. Well, at least, most always. It's rooted in a cooperative effort every morning. It's human nature, that level of cooperation, just like God created it to be. So it's an aspect of creation. Some of you are probably thinking, that's simpleton stock talk, but it's true. Somewhere down deep, it's elementary cooperation. God made us cooperative. He created us to be cooperative in many, many levels. Social, loving creatures, he showed us love in practice. That love is practiced by generous, genuous service to others in many levels. Being kind, patient, sympathetic, cooperative. And those levels of cooperation get deeper and deeper and deeper with those who call from us the greatest and deepest levels of love. Noblesse oblige. The higher we are on that ladder, the more obligated we are to love. So we love especially those who are lonely. Efforts there may be very easy to resist and very obnoxious to carry out in practice. Maybe, probably sometimes. Since we live in a world animated by our Heavenly Father, no risk taken in the name of love, no vulnerability chanced for the strengthening of our love, will be unnoticed or in vain. I simply express the truth of the last lines of the gospel you heard. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. And I say a last line. Doing nothing isn't very nice. Not even nice for me. 
Amen. Amen. Will you give us the creed there, Deacon Man? <laughs> Would you please rise in the profession of our faith? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, we praise the life that comes to us through our risen Lord. We offer you our needs and implore more of your love. Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That God may grant those affected by abuse in any way the courage to share and to seek healing, that they may encounter the light of Christ in their darkest moments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That this community be the branches to cultivate the life of Jesus within us, in order to share his love with those we encounter, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For caregivers and health professionals, may, be, may they be strengthened by God's compassion to share their gifts of healing, and for the sick to be restored to good health, especially those names of the chronically ill listed in the bulletin, those names written in the Book of Prayer in the Commons, and for those names we mention aloud now. Thomas, Andrew, Christina, Nicola, ben Alana. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all who have died, that they may be welcomed into your eternal kingdom, especially Mary Malangumu and Jean Dima Ima Iwat. For the names written in the Book of Prayer in the Commons, and for our deceased weekend mass intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have heard from us in the past because of the signs of your care and concern for all around us. Give ear now this morning and address the care of those in the greatest need before us. For them we pray most especially. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Walk by faith. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is for each of us a loving Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it our, zone, our very own by a worthy way of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right and true and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, this season, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought that sacrifice of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by coming himself to you for our salvation, showed himself priest, altar, and lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory, even as they acclaim. holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey we know is life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our very midst when we are gathered in his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of that last supper, he took bread, said the blessing broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son and our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on a cross to the glory of his resurrection, and whom you have seated now at your right hand. 
we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, the perfect faith and charity together with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, priests and deacons, and the entire people your son has gained as your own. Open our eyes to the needs of each other. Inspire in us words of inactions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve each other and truly after the example of Christ and, his, and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness as truth and freedom, peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. Remember those of us who have died, especially John Williams. Those who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And all the dead who have a claim on our prayers and our memories. Those whose faith you alone may have known, perhaps. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ, your Son, Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. We pray now happily as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your kindness, keep us free from sin. Protect us from every needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O oh, Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sins, but upon our faith, and grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you now. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
this is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ preserve our souls to life and life without end. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
For those that are taking Eucharist to the homebound, would you please come forward? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you as you take this, this Eucharist home to the homebound. May it nourish their minds, their bodies, and their souls. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways always to newness and newness of life through Christ our Lord.
Good morning, and thank you for joining us on this fifth Sunday of Easter. It's a pleasure to have you, each and every one of you here today. Uh, I would like to, first of all, remind everyone that we have a deadline looming. It's the YOA Ascension Golf Tournament, something that's near and dear to my heart, and I hope to yours too. But uh, it's coming up uh, on May the 10th is the uh, YOA event. It's at Heron Ridge. We are about 75% uh, towards our goal. Our goal for, for this year is about $20,000. So we're about three quarters of the way there. So if uh, in your heart you have a place to help us out, uh, either with being a golfer or a sponsor or a donor, that would be wonderful and we would appreciate it. You could see me or anyone on the golf committee. Janet Jones is also here, John Sedgick. So please see us after mass if you have any questions or would like to participate in some way. More than anything else, we would appreciate your prayers. Praying for a successful event, praying for good weather, and especially, most especially, for our youth because they, as well as us, uh, are those branches that Father was talking about. Okay, so please remember us and thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome any guests or visitors today. So if you're a guest or a visitor to the parish, would you please rise and tell us who you are and where you're from? Do we have any guests or visitors today? I see some movement, but I don't see anybody standing. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. Yes, would you please rise and tell us your name and where you're from? Oh. I came to give this message about the sanctity of life and pro-life. Yes. And yes. Very good. And you say your name's Laura? Silent for the young yeah. Ones. yeah. Yeah. Laura Laura from Philadelphia. Thank you. And we had many that participated in the Walk for Life last weekend and had a great event. So, thank you Laura for all that you're doing. Praise God. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you for our wonderful lectors, for Nancy and Mike, and for our altar servers, and a wonderful choir. What a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Father Joe, for your terrific homily. And would you please rise for Father's final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come upon you now and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. See